Can you like talk like as loud as I talk? How loud is that? Like, kind of. <laughs> Shall we begin? Today I want to talk about setting proper exposure with your DJI Spark. I'm going to show you how to do it, I'm going to show you the settings I use, and I'm also going to show you a trick or two as well. Now I've got, uh, I've got back, gone back to my old setup here and I've got my DJI Spark just over here and I've got my iPhone plugged into my remote with my OTG cable so I can capture video with the Spark and, and show you guys what's going on. Now. I'm doing this whole demonstration on my Spark because that's what I own and that's what I use, but a lot of these tips and techniques will work with any drone. So yeah, let's just get right into it. First off, I'm gonna go into camera settings and I'm gonna turn on some of the things that I use all the time. And these things are really necessary for determining and maintaining a correct exposure. So let's go into our camera settings here. And first thing I wanna turn on is the histogram absolutely essential. Cool thing about the histogram too is you can uh, touch it with your finger and you can drag it around and reposition it anywhere on the screen. I, re I really like that. Second thing I want to turn on is display camera OSD and that basically just puts all our camera settings on the screen so we can see them quickly and easily. That one stays fixed, can't move it around, which is, which is kind of sad, but that's okay. Uh, white balance, I'm not going to touch for now. I set it for custom white balance for this room and just going to leave it for now. And the last thing that I turn on are the basic grid lines which can aid in composition. Next I'm going to show you how I have my custom function button set on my remote to quickly bring up the camera settings that I need and use all the time. So let's go into our general settings which is the three dots in the top right hand corner. Let's click on our remote and let's just scroll down until we see our button customization. So I've already got my button set, so I have my function button on the front of the remote set to advanced camera settings. And I have the custom, the C button on the back here, I have that set to auto exposure lock slash unlock. Normally I would use manual, but for this demonstration I wanted to use auto exposure lock just to just show you guys how it works. Now. The function button is one method of getting in there. The second method is to just tap the center of your screen and this little icon lock gets displayed. And if you double tap the center of your screen, it's going to lock it. You'll see that the lock icon goes a solid yellow color and it will tell you in text that auto exposure is locked. You tap the center of the screen again and it unlocks it. It doesn't give you a message, but it unlocks it. And now that we've set our custom function button, well, that's gonna do the same thing. So if we press our function button, you see auto exposure locked, press it again, doesn't tell you anything, but it's actually unlocked. So we'll lock it again to make sure our exposure doesn't fluctuate too much. Now the other function button we set was just the one on the front here, and we push that and nothing happens. Okay, it happens a second time. So up comes our camera settings, perfect. From the very beginning, my, sh my exposure settings were ISO 200, 1 60th of a, a second shutter speed. And what I was noticing is that they were fluctuating between, between that and ISO 400 and 1 1 20th of a second. Well, just so you know, those are exactly, the, they, they are different representations of the same thing. They are equivalent exposures. So I find it odd that it's fluctuating, but it is the same exposure just expressed differently. Auto exposure lock is a great thing to use to avoid all those exposure fluctuations that happen when you're running in full auto mode. And it's, it's really easy to use, it's easy to lock it and unlock it, and I think it's a good step in the, in the right direction towards full manual mode. And one other tip, while your exposure is locked, you can still go into your camera settings and you can still dial in some exposure compensation, which you see I've had to do for the lighting conditions in this room. Okay, so we have all our basic settings all set up. So now, how do we figure out how to set the correct exposure? Well, before we can do that, we need to know how our Spark figures out exposure in the first place. And I did a video called Why You Should Avoid Auto Exposure, and I'll put a link in the description below and I, I think a lot of those ideas are worth repeating here. Now, this is a pretty big topic, so I'm, I'm, really, I'm really gonna simplify it and just give you guys the important bits. The first thing you need to know is that the Spark and any other modern digital camera for that matter, they, their metering systems work exactly the same way. So 
They don't measure incidental light, the light falling directly on the scene. They don't measure that, they measure the reflected light. And your camera is determining the correct exposure based on the average brightness values reflected back to the sensor. This is where the histogram comes in. And we all remember our histograms, right? So a histogram is basically just a graphical representation of the distribution of tonal values in our image. On the, on the left side we have, like all the way on the left side is our, are the pure black values. In the middle, it's all the mid-tones, gray values. And on the right hand side, far right hand side is pure white. Now, this may be an oversimplification, but every camera's metering system is trying to get every scene to be an average distribution of values. Not too bright, not too dark, just somewhere nice and safe in the middle. And this can be easily demonstrated. I have three colored cards, a white one, a black one, and a green one, which is pretty much representative of middle tone values. And before I, before I start putting those, those cards in front of the camera, I'm, I'm gonna turn off auto exposure lock so the exposure can fluctuate. And I'm also gonna get rid of my exposure compensation value. Now watch as I put each card in front of the camera to fill the frame. Pay particular attention to how the exposure is changing and how the shape of the histogram is changing. And note how the camera's metering system is trying to get each one of these scenes to be an average exposure or middle gray. When I introduce the black card, the camera's metering system is seeing all these dark reflected values and it thinks the, the scene is underexposed. So it increases the exposure and we end up with this, this gray black card. Opposite happens when we introduce the white card. The, the metering system says, wow, this scene is way too bright. It lowers the exposure and our white ends up gray. The green card, which is pretty much middle tone values, well, the exposure doesn't fluctuate much at all and we end up with the correct exposure. Now, with the exposure locked, if I introduce these cards again, you'll see they, they end up being the correct colors. So green first. Green looks good. Get the black one. Black looks good. Black looks good. And hey, look at that. Our whites actually look white. Starting to make sense? So if, we, if we're setting our exposure and we point the Sparks camera at something very bright, well, the exposure is gonna be set incorrectly. It's gonna be set too dark. Consequently, if we point it at something dark, the exposure is gonna be set incorrectly because it's gonna be set too bright. So when we are setting exposure, we want to point our Spark towards something that's kind of even distribution of tonal values, some mid-tones you know, maybe concrete, uh, uh, a beige sandy beach, something like that. So we're looking for an evenly lit, even toned scene. Now, keep in mind, this is a very simple technique to get you kind of a basic starting exposure. Once you get your spark up in the air, you're probably gonna to wanna to tweak it a little bit to make sure the exposure is just how you want it. If you're using manual mode, you're good to go. You don't have to worry about fluctuations, but if you're not, make sure you lock your auto exposure so it doesn't fluctuate during flight. So that's a quick rundown on setting your exposure. So let's take our, our Spark outside for some flight time and see how these techniques work in the field. Yeah, let's go. All right, time to go flying. We're pretty much ready to go. We've got everything connected. We're, we're ready to take off and start flying. So next thing we want to do is set our exposure. 
So as I explained earlier in the video, when you're setting your exposure, you just wanna aim your camera at kind of a neutral toned scene. We don't wanna point at anything that's too bright. We don't wanna point at anything that's too dark or the camera's metering system is going to pick an incorrect exposure. So I think that looks pretty good at an ISO of 100 and a shutter speed of 1 2500th of a second. So really the thing to remember here is that is just a starting exposure. We're just trying to get a base exposure and we can work with that and we can dial that in a bit more once we're in the air. So let's use that as our base exposure and let's get going. So if you're gonna be on auto, if you're gonna be on auto, all you wanna do is wait till it sets that exposure for you and then we set our custom function button, we press that, we get the auto exposure locked and we're good to go. We, time to start flying. And if you're gonna be flying in manual mode, you just take those settings that the, that the metering system has figured out for you and you just plug them in as your, your starter settings for manual mode. Easy peasy, right? And of course, if you're going to all that trouble to set a manual exposure or locking your auto exposure, make sure you're not flying in auto white balance either because you don't want your color fluctuating. You want that nice and steady too. So I'm not gonna bother switching over to manual mode. I've got it locked by, I've got my auto exposure locked down. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna take off and start flying and see how it looks. I seem to be getting a lot of compass errors today. I don't know what's going on. I'm not gonna worry about it because the spark's not very far away from me. So I just kind of looking at my screen and looking at the, uh, the histogram, I think actually things actually look pretty good. So I have a lot of darker tones, but I'm sitting over the river right now and the river is very dark. It's not reflecting a lot of light. So that's pretty accurate, but the rest of the extra exposure looks really good. I'm not seeing any, even as I point into the snowbank, you're seeing a bit of blown out highlights, but not too much. So I think, I think we actually chose a, a really good starting exposure. And as I mentioned, when you're in auto exposure lock, or even if you're in manual mode, you can still go into your camera settings and you can tweak that exposure on the fly, you know, up and down a little bit. Really easy to do. So we're gonna zoom around a little bit, capture some video and uh, see how it looks. Well, there you go. I, I think that kind of shows how quickly and easily you can set, you know, a basic starting exposure. You can lock those setting down, settings down so you don't have any fluctuations in flight. And, and really that's what it's all about. It's about if you want to get the best possible footage, you want to lock that exposure down either using the auto exposure lock or just setting manual exposure just so you're not getting any fluctuations and your footage just looks its absolute very best. And don't forget, if you're locking down your exposure, make sure you lock in that white balance too to avoid any color fluctuations too. And as always guys, thank you so much for watching. Questions and comments are always welcome. And uh, yeah, I, I guess we'll see you in the next one. Oh no, hold on, hold on.